Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's summarize the different kinds of series you could run into. And then of course, the goal is to find whether or not the series converges or diverges. The key always is recognizing the form of the series. Now here we have eight different examples of different types of series you can run into. And then in the next videos, we're going to go through some more detail and then some examples afterwards of how to implement each of these techniques. So we could have a series that looks like 1 over n to the p power. It's called the p series. And it will converge when p is greater than 1, because then the denominators get small very quickly. Or they will diverge when p is smaller than 1, because then actually the denominator will get smaller and smaller. So the elements or the terms will become bigger and bigger. The second type is when we have what we call a geometric series. We have a constant times r to the n minus 1. And then we realize that this converges when r is less than 1. Now r is the common ratio and it'll diverge when r is greater than 1, when the common ratio is greater than 1, meaning that every consecutive term becomes bigger and bigger compared to the previous term. We have other series which are similar to the P series or the geometric series. They're just slightly different. And so what we do then is if we realize that it's smaller than the P series or smaller than the geometric series and the equivalent or not equivalent but the geometric or P series that looks very similar to that converges, then if this is smaller then we can say this then must also converge. We can also by inspection see that if we take the limit as n approaches infinity that the terms become smaller and smaller but if they don't turn become zero in the limit then we know that they will diverge and we can do a divergence test. Another type of series when we have what we call the alternating series we have minus 1 raised to the n minus 1 or minus 1 raised to the n times b sub n. We can see that we have to do an alternating series test to see if it converges or diverges. Sometimes we have factorials included or other products within the, the terms of the series. If that's the case, we can get by with using the ratio test. If every one of the terms has the form b sub n to the n power, then we have to use the root test. And finally, if we have a sub n being a function of n, in other words, if every term is actually a function of n, and we can find the integral from 1 to infinity of the function dx, then we can solve it like that. That's called using the integral test. So again, it's all about recognizing the form that you're seeing and then recognizing which of the tests will enable, enable you to find whether or not it converges or diverges. So here's a nice summary for us. Now let's go and look at some of the details of how to actually implement those. And that's how it's done.